I have uh, a thought when you were saying that is that then the vortex would contain that we have there, our vibrational escrow, would be fresh, even though it's been contained. You know, I mean, even though it's been there already, it would feel really good. fresh. Constantly fresh. Right. So that's like we're always creating our new selves in a way, even though it's been there, but when we catch up to it, it'll feel fresh. That's why what exhilarating life is, because you're exploring contrast and creating fresh desire, now you get the fresh journey to the fresh new result. That's why we are eternal. That's why we're always fresh, always moving toward. We said in the beginning of this day that as you're moving toward what you've become, it always feels good. When you're widening the gap, it always feels uncomfortable. And then we like to say, you never get it done. So don't try to close the gap, just expand and move in the direction of your expansion. It's a simple concept, a little more difficult to learn to apply because momentum has you recreating recreating what you don't mean to if you're not paying attention but if we have convinced you that you're vibrational beings have we and that law of attraction is responding to your vibration and that the way you feel is the indicator prior to the manifestation then if you catch yourself early in a thought that doesn't feel good and you're able to replace it with a thought that does now you have really manageable control of what's happening in your life experience We've been offering a very simplistic analogy, but it, it's a good place to start relative to momentum. See your car at the top of the hill in San Francisco and nudge it a little and it starts down the hill. And if you catch it before it really gets rolling, you can step in front of it and stop it. It just bumps up against you and everything's all right. But if you're at the foot of the hill and it's coming down at you and that's how you choose to stop the momentum, it's more painful and, and usually... <laughs> and so... If we were standing in your physical shoes and Jerry said that to Esther the other day, she was riding with him and he said, well, if I were standing in my physical shoes, it made her laugh right out loud. <laughs> if we were standing in your physical shoes, we would take this small handful of concepts and information from this gathering and we would just focus on it for a little while and we promise you it will yield you more results than any combining of any philosophical points that you've ever applied really brief we would acknowledge that we are vibrational and that we can choose the disc and then we would go to sleep tonight intending to reach for the best feeling thought that we could find in the morning with the intention of getting on that high flying disc with the intention of rendezvousing with things that feel like that and then we would be aware of the way we feel and in the moment that we realize that we are flying less high even if it's just a little we would realize that we have 17 seconds to draw back from that thought to refocus that thought because once you cross the 17 second mark it's gonna start rolling so we'd step out in front of that car and stop it in that early stage and then as we're moving through the day we would watch for evidence of our alignment just do that for a few days and we promise you Esther has become so obnoxious and we mean that in the nicest way she has a pen that she likes to write with that Kate gave her that looks like a magic wand and she's just sort of waving it around to the universe I choose that and that and that and she's reached this place that she knows that it's coming it's just a matter of perfect timing and she's also wise enough to know she doesn't want it all at once what a uncomfortable overwhelming day that would be <laughs> if it all came today she likes it to be incrementally spaced out so that the timing of the delivery of the insight the thought the manifestation the emotion the co-creation the rendezvous so that the delivery of it can be devoured and enjoyed in the way that you've intended for it to be this is all for your pleasure you're the creator of your own reality and people when they hear that Seth coined that phrase when people hear you create your own reality they quite often argued no I don't I wouldn't have created that I wouldn't have done that to me and we say we didn't say you did it on purpose but you did do it everything everything your response to everything around you is your creation so then it begins to occur to you that you can't control what others do it's not your job to do it you really want to keep your nose out of their business but it is your job the way you're responding to what others are doing 
so Esther began saying well I can be by myself really well I can fly high when I'm by myself because I can direct my thoughts and I can get energy going and I can feel my empowerment and I've got that covered in strangers I got that covered too strangers are just so good to me the universe is just picking the nicest of them and bringing them to me it's those people I know that I have old pipes about that I have old pipes about not people I know who have characteristics that bother me people I know who I have old pipes about so if you've got people that are really annoying you and you keep rendezvousing with them on that disc you might want to stop thinking about them so you stop rendezvousing with them in other words what keeps things active is your attention to it you see what else that's good stuff it is you are the creator of you you're the creator of your mood start there I'm the creator of my mood therefore I'm the creator of my day just start there I'm the creator of my mood and therefore I'm the creator of my day I'm the chooser of my mood I'm the chooser of my mood and therefore I am the creator of my day I'm the chooser of my mood and therefore I'm the chooser of my day I create my mood and therefore I create my day